An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. A genuine expression. A certain life. Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, few egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, zany, politically incorrect. Your own global style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you to be to the fullest. And here we go. We're live on air. Hello, everybody, and um, welcome to yet another edition of Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy. And back once again, we have Max Egan. Absolutely love this guy. Um, known him for a few years now and you know he's been doing his own work with with you know his radio show and all of his travels and this that and the other and do, doing his thing even even long before I met him and like Max is just a really 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 great guy and you know it is absolutely my privilege to know him and and be a friend of his and that's not to that's not to put him on a pedestal as max likes to say he's a regular human being equal to everybody else and you know that's the way i feel about myself and and everybody else too but um you know just giving giving credit where credit is due and just you know showing max's level of you know just his integrity and you know the type of person that he is he's uh definitely the uh the, the sort of person that um understands what being a a genuine friend is and um oh and and also just to let everybody know um straight out the gate um i di i did help max um set up his patreon account so anybody that wants to help him out that's like the only way he's making money right now so anybody who um wants to support his shows and um wants to see his shows um continue um just go to patreon.com forward slash max egan and um you know you can uh, help him out for as little as a buck a month and um, we also have a, uh, a Patreon account as well, patreon.com forward slash PSEC Media, P-S-E-C Media. So welcome back, Max. Pleasure, brother. Thanks for asking me on. Sorry it's taken so long to get here. A lot of uh, trouble with the internet. That's what you do when you <laughs> oh. hard drives fail and you know, life in the Amazon. Yeah, it's so all good. We've got a limited window what? here today because I've been told they're coming to yeah. point down at some stage this morning so it's a never-ending saga but we're here yeah. while we can be anyway yeah plus to let everybody know there's a slight amount of um lag latency so me and max are not actually intentionally trying to interrupt each other it's just that by the but you know silences versus speaking can get slightly mistimed so when you think there's a spot there's actually not so it's um i get i guess um live stream bumper cars i suppose <laughs> oh it is it has just been an interesting year even so far um you usually um you know for for each year i just kind of tend to have an intuition about what the general theme of it's going to be and then i give it a name and these last few years so far have been right. I'm not sure where exactly this comes from. Well, of course I do. We're all connected to source and all that. But 2015 was the year of action. 2016, um, the year of discovery. And 2017, the year of integration. And, um, you know, as we know, especially for, like, discovery, there's a lot of 
purification involved and in order to to be purified you got to face your mess you know deal with your demons deal with your shit um get yourself sorted out so of course you saw a lot of stuff with you know social justice warriors and you know people being emotionally triggered and all sorts of crazy and um now in 2017 and like from my experiences, and you could tell me whether or not you've had similar phenomenon, my experiences both on, you know, just in the level of being me and what's being reflected in my own life, plus friends and family around me, and, you know, just on the global stage, like I see this, like, in, in the whole fractal, it's crazy, like, right now, um, um, well, um, um Max is asking if, uh, he wa he wants uh, me to share a link as far as the stream that's on now. Um, yeah, there should be. A, okay. Um, Sorry to have interrupted your flow. I didn't mean to. Oh, it's it's oh it's all it, it's all good. Let me um uh, let me give you a a link that you can give to people so that they can you know listen to the stream and whatever, and you could say that you're live now with that um there there's there's the link for the for viewers who want to um who want to check that out you can uh, you can post that okay. on your uh, on your social media oh good so please continue yep sure sure but anyway what i've noticed is um in 20 um 2017 um, really seems to be very already starting intensely um, just everybody being triggered on certain issues and a, a lot of facing of paradigms and clearing and um, integration because there seems to be like this I'm noticing this major um, rise in compassion like I, I've noticed that everything seems to come in waves like if you if you go all the way back you know, first, there was like, you know, in the 90s and before, just the little fringe elements, the people who were awake, quote unquote, we did not have all this broadband and everything else. Then after 9-11, you know, the truth movement built up its momentum. But even though the truth movement is well intended, because of the massive um, lack of compassion within the truth movement, it's only been able to get so far. And like you've ranted on that at length, Max. I mean, definitely, and so have I. Um, but we, but you notice that everything, everything evolves up to a certain point, and then something new ends up blooming out of it. So first you have the oblivious mainstream and what ends up blooming out of it because of whistleblowers is the fringe stuff in the 80s and 90s. Then once the fringe stuff hit its its limit, the truth movement bloomed out of that synchronistically and because of 9-11, thank you elites. Well, now because of the, you know, the infighting and all of the intensity and all that within the truth movement, now there seems to be this for lack of a better word, and I, I don't even want to call it a movement, it's more like an idea whose time has come, as you've liked to explain it. I, I just have been referring to it as the wave of compassion that's just been bombarding the planet. And depending on how much shit a person has to clear or not, this wave of compassion can make people react very lovingly and i mean in a genuine way not like that new agey fake shit as a matter of fact i've i've seen it starting to shake you know some sense into some new agers and go and they're like wow the shun the dark stuff i had it all wrong i need to face the mess not ignore it um and then of course somebody who's got too much negative um and too much hate and too much prejudice and all of that built up in them they get hit by the wave of compassion and it's so different from that frequency so how are they going to react of course they're going to retaliate against it so i've also seen incidents where, where people get get super triggered just from somebody being polite to them you know and e and when it happens even the person being triggered seems confused because it, you know even from their perception it seems a little over the top even for them and not to mention it's already been scientifically proven that, you know, we are moving into a new area of space physically, the photon belt does exist, and all of that. 
So there, there's definitely changes in, in frequency, changes, or just all this rapid change, like there's this domino effect, this expansion, like, like we're giving birth to a new and better world, but the earth is going through a lot of labor pains and there's no epidural drip. Have your experiences been, been matching similar observations? I'm just curious. Well, yeah, there's certainly waves of compassion that are happening, but I mean, the energy is really shifting. It's like people have had their, they've been ripped up by their, their anchors pulled out sort of thing. <laughs> and not only just, just pulled out, but like ripped out. You know, people are dealing with, with sort of energies that they've never dealt with before. And a lot of people are having a hard time dealing with it, you know. Um, we're heading for some really, really bizarre times. We are. And there's so much division happening at the moment as well, but I think what we're we're really being given here is is a, a an opportunity, a chance for mankind to stand up and wake up to itself. I really do. I think this whole Trump presidency and everything that's brought this about, and everything that we went through in the last year, which was certainly a year of revealing and a year of discovery. It was a year where a lot of things revealed themselves. It was like a trial by fire for the empath last year. It really was. It was for me. It was for a lot of people that I know, like everybody that I know went through extremely rough times last year. So I think um, this year, I mean, it's so confusing. I mean, people are so confused at the state of the world politically and energetically that uh, it's anybody's guess where we're going to go. But ultimately, it's going to come down to the people. This is what I've been saying all along, even when uh, it became apparent that Trump was going to be elected. I said, it's not going to matter what he does. It's going to matter what the people do with the opportunity that this provides. So, yeah, there's, there's some really bizarre stuff going on. And it's anybody's guess as to where we're going to go. But I think we're going to see a lot of stuff revealed this year. I think we're at a turning point. Um, if the people are prepared to put down this whole left-right paradigm and this um, identity politics that they're all getting involved in, because that, that's really what we've seen in this last election, they can put all that aside and realise that now is the time for the human race to unite and, and find a way out of this mess. And we will find a way out of it. You know, the problem is, I mean, with this last election, it's pr probably the only election that we've seen recently or the most most uh, predominant election where people, everybody who voted kind of voted because they hated the opposition. Most of the people <laughs> who voted for Clinton didn't didn't really want her in, but they just didn't want Trump in. And most of the people who yeah. voted for Trump just yeah. didn't want Clinton in. So that's really bizarre. That That's complete identity politics and complete division. And it, it's been designed and, and constructed that way. I mean, I think that... Um, all of this is a play, I really do. For a while, I was very excited. It's, the, that Trump it's a got shell elected. game. Well, yeah, for a while, I was very excited that Trump got elected, and I thought, well, this is this is going to shift things. This is something new that I, I don't know what's going to happen because I've really got no knowledge of Donald Trump. He's not someone I've researched or really investigated his life much at all. And I thought, well, this is a wild card. It could go any way. <laughs> so good that he got elected because it shows, I mean, out of everything, even if he is a player, it still shows that the people were pissed off enough with what they had that anything was better than what they had. And if it wasn't Trump, it would have been someone else. It's the same as what we saw in Australia in the last election. So many major parties had voted for independence. So whether that's good or not, it shows that people are annoyed with what they've had. They've just had enough of this system. And they want some way out, any way out. You know, they've, they've gone for Trump thinking that's, that's what's going to lead them to safety. I think they've been uh, played with that one. But maybe that will provide an opportunity for them to see that there are no leaders and actually have to take responsibility for themselves. So that's maybe what this year will be. If if what you say, this wave of compassion <coughs> is happening, I mean, there's definitely something happening. The energy is r really shifting. Everybody that I know can feel it, and I can feel it. Mm. It's just strange. The year, everything, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel normal. It almost feels <coughs> like we've entered a different reality, like the Mandela effect's real or something. We're in a parallel. Oh reality. yeah. I mean, there's you know, something. You know what? Oh, yeah, yeah, to totally. And it's becoming more and more, you know, apparent. Um, shit, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm like really tired. And I'm just running on, you know, like caffeine and nicotine here. So everybody excuse any like any uh, fogginess or, or lack of clarity here. But one one thing that I've noticed that I think um, both you and, and the viewers will be interested in and this is just an observation of mine i'm not saying i'm right or wrong i'm just saying as the as the years continue to unfold this can be used as a little bit of a curiosity measure to help uh, vet things 2012 um as some people may or may not know 
is the middle point of the uh, procession of the equinoxes. There's 18 years on either side because, you know, on, on the cosmic scale, you know, our sun, our solar system is moving through space at, at near the speed of light. Well, at the same time, our planet is whipping around that sun at like 10,000 miles, you know, per hour. And at the same time, you know, we're you know, spinning at a thousand miles per hour. It's, it's pretty mind boggling to think about, but so it's not like it's a line that the earth steps over to where it's like, okay, we have the procession. It's not like jumping from one sidewalk tile to, to the other. It's a, uh, it's, it's this um, 36 year period. So if you, 20, 2013 seems to have been like, like year zero, like a recalibration period. 2012 is like that middle line where, you know, we crossed out of the old reality and in, into the new reality. But just because you go into something new doesn't mean you're instantly evolved. Like, you know, ju just because um, a baby is born into this new reality doesn't mean they're instantly a college graduate. Things take time. So I I've noticed that collectively as above, so below, because everything's a fractal metaphor of everything else. Um, if 2013 is year zero, if we look at how people acted in, um, in 2014, Metaphorically speaking, if we view the to the collective of humanity almost as, as like one person or one li little child, humanity became one year old in 2014. Before then, we weren't even birthed, right? So how do one-year-olds act? And how is the consciousness of humanity acting in 2014? If you look, you've got a match. You go to 2015, humanities too. Now, was he, was he, did humanity seem to be acting like a two-year-old in 2015? Oh yeah, big time. 2016, how does a three-year-old act? Was humanity as a collective whole acting the way a three-year-old would act in terms of development as an individual? Yes, it was. And 2017, are we starting to act for? Well, look at the perfect timing with this with this wave of compassion. Um, age four is really when the brain starts to starts to have more solid, you know, formation of um, neural networks to be able to handle more um, complex information, you know, both um, cerebrally and emotionally. So if we look at it in, in um, you know, that fractal metaphor, it seems that if we look at 2013 as year zero, and we think of the whole collective of humanity as, you know, being almost like its own individual person, and in 2013, humanity turned one, and, you, and as we look at the progression as we go forward in time, um, it'll be very interesting if that trend continues to keep aligned to those years as time goes forward. And if it does remain, remain aligned, then if 18 is considered species maturity, then we don't have long to go. And if we don't have long to go, then that means, you know, in less than 18 years, the world is going to be changing exponentially. And that's exactly what we have been seeing is an exponentially changing world. And then, of course, you've got the contrast, the dark and the light colliding, like hot and cold and steam, and you know. But um, I thought you might find that fascinating. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting analogy. It's, it's quite, it'll be quite interesting to see. I mean, I hope it does change that quickly. And, like, if the world hasn't changed in, in the last 18, in the next 18 years, then, well, God help us all. But uh, hopefully yeah. we will have got out in this mess uh, way before then. I think there's been so much revealed recently. Like, there really has. I don't know if you've been oh, following yeah. the George, Like, the, the work of George Webb with the Clinton emails and Dine Corp and all the human trafficking. I mean, we've been talking about this for years. I've been talking about the fact that the human race has been farmed for years and years. And, you know, people mm -hmm. farming, that's what our government's been doing. I've been talking about the fact that there's a, a, a dark ring of pedophiles that exist behind this reality. And there's a whole reality that exists behind this society, which is essentially farming this society. And what's happened with the um, revelations in the Clinton emails is that now it's all provable. Now it's all there in their own hands. Everything we've been talking about is there. And you can see how all these wars are manufactured and contrived. You can see what the governments are really doing. It's not about helping anybody. 
It's about controlling people and harvesting people. That's what governments are doing. Harvesting not just people, but resources and taking over countries and just basically setting up their new world order and their control grid. And nothing's changed. With the Trump presidency, nothing's changed. But people are seeing it now. And the Trump presidency is such a, is such a debacle. It's such a, a circus that hopefully people are going to see, look, this is all such a play. This whole political thing is such a play. All this talk of national security and all these spy agencies and all these war machines and all this rubbish, we don't need any of it. We don't. So hopefully that's what we're going to see from this. So it's all happened for a reason. It really has. I mean, the last year, as, as hard as it was, it was very, very necessary. And what we're seeing unfold this year is one of the greatest opportunities we've ever had. I would say bring it on. I mean, let it get more ridiculous. Let Trump do more outrageous things and let people scream louder and louder about it. But just if you're out there watching it, just break out of this left-right paradigm. Don't join a side because that's what they want you to do. They want you to either be for Trump or against Trump and fight with the other guys. That's what they want. They don't care which side you join. They don't care whether you're for him or against him. They don't care what you believe in as long as you adopt a belief and you fight with people who don't have that same belief. So step back from all of that and realize that we're all one species here on this earth doing this together. And we have a real opportunity here to free ourselves from this criminal puppet show that's been running things for so many years. I mean, literally centuries, yeah. these, these people have been running things. And now we've got an opportunity to deal with that. And this whole farce of the Trump presidency will hopefully make people wake up to the power that they have. So, I mean, he comes yeah. across kind of as one a real thing. guy as well. You know, he's got Twitter and he's got all this sort of stuff. So the fact that he's the president and he's doing all this normal stuff, this is good. It shows he's a normal guy. There's just normal people on earth here, folks. There's no rulers. Nobody yeah. has a right of ownership over you. I it's do, just normal. I do, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I do. I do like that. Uh, I do like that about Trump because we as a society have been taught to put social titles on a pedestal of authority and, you know, act as if, you know, someone has this title, this means they must be better than them, higher than them, above them. And to see someone that we're, we're used to having, you know, this sort of um, authoritative type of title, then go ahead and very publicly just act like a regular human being for both better and worse, depending on exactly what you're talking about, you know, but showing yeah. well, that there's always, what, there's always what, a disconnect. What, there's always a disconnect between us and the president or whatever with, with Trump. Yeah. There isn't that, there isn't that disconnect. And that's, exactly. that's, he might think that he's warming for the people that way, but really he's created a vulnerable point because he's shown people that there's, there's no real leaders here. It's just people. And it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Here's here's also also why this is important, and it's coming in perfect al alignment with things as well. Um, like I said, with um, with this wave of, of compassion coming in, and you know what I'm about to say is something I've known even even before then, and I'm I'm happy to see this wave coming in. But um, the biggest, hugest thing that holds people locked into their complacency and and i mean you know as we've seen even people who are for the most part quote unquote awake or at the very least aware of things going on although as my friend melanie uh, or mel v from uh, ccn likes to say if you lack compassion you're not awake and that's not even a, and that's not even a diss on anybody but um you know that's just like saying you know fire's hot it's just you know it is what it is but i've noticed that with you know um compassion or if you want to call it higher vibrational frequency slamming into all of the the negativity inside of all of us or lower vibrational frequency if you want to um call it that what then comes up for everyone to face has been the very thing locking people into complacency and that thing is the number one weapon that the elites have always used against us and that thing being shame because um one of the biggest things the the whole like um we're taught to devalue our our own self-worth and of course you know the bible even says that um we will love our neighbor as we love ourselves and a lot of people tend to think they're worthless pieces of shit so they similarly love their neighbors they love themselves but anyway when this compassion <coughs> starts to starts to hit the shame then people start having to face it and face their self-worth issues instead of going into complacent denial 
and you know it's engines like you know the fashion industry and all these sorts of things that have promoted the shame and what's been happening you know over the years as people have been awakening um they they awaken to certain aspects of how the mind matrix works right and like conceptually cerebrally intellectually you know they can they can see and understand how the manipulations work but because they're emotion and have feelings and you know there's no user manual telling them how to psychologically and emotionally you know address their own needs and they've been you know caught in the stockholm syndrome you know like everybody else has um you know basically there's um there's a lot of intensity as they shift because as they catch themselves in programs and they're aware that they're running a program they're thinking i should know better than that i'm i'm more evolved than that i shouldn't be doing this to myself this is self-sabotage then shame goes into guilt which then springs a denial mechanism so then it's like no then they don't even want to acknowledge to, the, to even themselves that they're doing something like that. So they're still kind of co-opted in that way by the matrix because the mental malware is kind of like retaliating. So it's trying to retaliate, lock you in, people become aware of it. And then instead of hitting the pause button and go, okay, I see what this is doing. Let's make a better choice than I would normal, normally make. Their neural networks are, are like freaking out. And this has been a very common thing. And I've noticed that people within their belief structures, in order for something to be fully real for them, it needs to meet a, a required misery level in order for them to accept it. Otherwise, if it's too good, too fast, with no um, misery contrast attached, then it's too good to be true. And because people are more afraid of their success than, than their failure, because they're used to failure. It's normalized. They're comfortable with it. They know how to navigate it. But success, they don't. So right now, human consciousness is starting to untangle itself from this mindfuck web to the point that I've even started seeing, um, you know, new agers start to shift away from the shun shun the dark and going more into you know like what like as you say information is just information and we need to take personal responsibility for our you know for our our own part in things so i'm even seeing you know a shift starting with new agers and it's very painful and confusing for them but they've decided that going through that pain and confusion is better than living this waking death zombie nightmare well you know they've been brutalized the new ages they really have i mean they've been waiting to ascend for the last 25 years and they're starting to realize that they were sold a lie <laughs> what they were sold was yeah. a, a doctrine basically of spiritual narcissism where you sit there and wait for life to end i mean what's that all about you're sitting there preparing for the afterlife what about this life you're here for a reason maybe you should participate maybe you wouldn't have to spend yeah. your time meditating to get away from all this dark stuff if you would actually look at it and address it you know and a lot of them are in that state of high vibration and they won't look at anything that lowers their vibration so really they're in a state of fear they're in a state of fear of processing certain forms of light and they're calling it love and that's what they're projecting yeah so i mean it's completely well, it's, bizarre. It's, 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 it's the it's the wolf and wolf and wolf and sheep's clothing as it were what i what i like to tell them in these days that a lot of them are surprisingly receptive to this now they didn't used to be i t uh, when it comes to ascension i tell them you're all uh, the joke is that you're all already ascended you're just taking the 3d blindfolds off as you paradigm shift the 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 thing that you've been looking for you already are it and now they're looking yeah that's the thing like, the whoa that's been... profound yeah well we're the ones we've been waiting for i mean we always have been but like you say before there's so much complacency and this is what a lot of the movies and, and theater and all this stuff's about as well. You know, we see these movies of these dystopian futures and we look at them and go, oh, we're not there yet, so we're good. And we become complacent again. We, we are there. It's just not as quite as overt as what it is in that movie or overt as what it is in that movie. But we are there yet. You know these what, things though? are pressure relief valves, you know. All these things, sports, um, all these things are pressure relief valves. We didn't have action <coughs> movies and we didn't have sports. And we didn't have a uh, war on TV. 
we would have been a revolution long ago. They really would have. But all of these things are, are released, release the pressure from us and put us back into that state of complacency. It's a very, very clever program, but it's very, you very. You know deliberate. what, though, Max? There's one thing I've been I've been wanting to tell you that I that I keep forgetting that I that I just just now remembered because you kind of reminded me. Um, one thing that I've been seeing a lot of that you probably haven't seen. Um, really much of because you've been like way too busy to see this but I also you know like to watch a lot of movies and TV shows of the although of course I'm very selective about what I watch and what I've noticed um, as things are shifting more towards the positive towards the light whatever you, uh, any whatever euphemistic term someone wants to put on that <clears throat> A lot of these TV programs are starting to be designed to deprogram people. Um, Disney, especially, has started shifting a little more to the light than the dark. Um, like one example is there's a show called Once Upon a Time. You may or may not be be familiar with it, but um, the show is total paradigm shift in deprogramming and it's great and it it's done subtly enough to stay just under the the elite's radar a radar and is not so overt that you know it's triggering people it's allowing for the deprogramming to kind of kind of slip right in behind the scenes um there have been other shows that i've seen that try to do too much whistleblowing too fast they get on the elite's radar and all of a sudden the show is magically canceled surprise surprise but you know so there are good people that are in hollywood now that are kind of learning the art of staying just under under the radar of the elite so that they can they can deprogram the masses through certain mainstream content but without the higher ups noticing and putting the kibosh on it because they're learning that when they when they put out too much too fast the show gets canceled like that well, yeah, you know, but um, you've got to watch what they're putting out with the stuff as well. I mean, very often they're, they're spinning a lot of disinformation in these shows as well. Things like the X-Files. I mean, the X-Files exposed a lot of good stuff. It showed there was a deep state. And then it associated with all of this really bizarre UFO stuff and all this stuff, which is provable disinformation, and basically coined the term conspiracy theorist. So that suddenly conspiracies all became theory. So you've got to look at how they, they program people through these things as well. I mean, there may be a certain amount. I'm, I'm very questioned about anything that, that shows what we would term awakening. For what is the other subtext beneath that? I mean, I'm not familiar with the shows that you're talking about, but you've got to look at the subtext and the um, the associative things that they associate these sorts of truths oh, with. Oh, I know. This is oh, I know, classic totally. Works is they, they put in enough... Um, real information to make it believable and now they put smatters of uh, smatterings of truth in there but ultimately it's all disinformation you, know, you get the truth and you embellish it to the point that it becomes unbelievable and associated with all sorts of stuff yeah. and people throw the baby out with a bar so you've got to watch that as well you know but i'll be interested yeah. to see the shows i mean hopefully there is some sort of deprogramming happening on television there must be people within oh, the, there the is. industry you know, concerned about the is. situation we've been going as well so Hopefully, hopefully yeah. we will we'll see a little bit more of that. But I mean, I recommend people throw their televisions away and just get involved in their communities. That would be a good thing. And this is why I want to close my Facebook accounts as well, because uh, I think we need to get off social media and get involved in life again. Social media is, is destroying life. It's destroying people's communication skills. It's pitting people against each other. It's creating so much animosity and division because people are just uh, taking text too seriously. You know, when you read stuff in text, yeah. you can't put emotion into it. You don't read the body language. You don't hear the voice. You don't really know what the person's saying. You just read it in text and you take it as black and white. And, you know, people are taking each other the wrong way. They're taking each other to the extreme. And it's just creating more and more problems, I think. So I think we need to move hey, away Max. from social media. If we're going to use social media, maybe things like this, where we're actually talking and communicating to each other in real time, hey, not just text. Yeah, just just to let you know, I view social media as a tool just like any other. 
And as mu as true as everything you just said is, all that stuff does happen, there's a lot of good stuff that happens too. I mean, most of my experiences on social media have been absolutely positive. Um, I've made a lot of really great friends, a lot of which, you know, at minimum, you know, we've communicated in, you know, audio, video, um, you know, mediums privately and publicly like this. And, you know, even better, I've made friends in person and things like that. So, I mean, social media is just a tool. Most of my experiences have been positive. I've had a few negative ones. Um, so, I mean, what you're saying about social media is equally true. People got to be careful to not fall into that trap. But at the same time, I've had so many positive and uplifting experiences as well. And that aspect of social media is equally true and equally valid. So everybody's just got to have their discernment on high alert and give themselves sovereign permission to deal with the people that they resonate with and I think that's been another big theme of 2017 that I've been seeing. Um, a lot of people are starting to be more willing to to let go of things that, that no longer resonate and let those drift and welcome in new and better things. Because I think one of, one of humanity's biggest problems is that we've been taught to put up so many walls to keep us from knowing ourselves, to keep us from, from knowing other people. We've put, we put up so many walls. And as we start to let go of the walls, and stop getting so control freaky then we're willing to let people go who need to go and we're willing to let people come in who need to come in instead of trying to control freak our, our own reality all the time well yeah yeah absolutely I mean there is a lot of positive stuff happens on social media but you know I look at Facebook even the name Facebook I mean it's a data miner. it's a data miner that, that searches for people by facial recognition and you know when i look at it i mean i use social media to share information as well but with what they've done with, with things like facebook there's algorithms in place now whereby information just doesn't get shared you know i post stuff and people just don't see it because there's algorithms to prevent it i mean facebook knows what it wants shared and it knows what it doesn't want shared and there's certain things that just don't get shared so you know wh how much how much of a difference am i making by using facebook i mean i, I might reach an extra 50 or 100 people by posting a video there, but out of out of like forty five thousand, um, you know, combined followers on on all the pages I've got, there's not really a lot of people. Uh, am I simply putting Matt, all those people who've connected with me on a watch list? So, you know, how Matt, much good am I doing? How much am I achieving by even using? You've had, you've reached a lot more people than than you think, and um, and man, I get I give people this analogy all the time. Think of yourself as the stone that gets tossed to the center of the pond, and the earth is the pond. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, I, I know all that. That, st I, that stone, that that stone is not going to be able to see most of its own ripples, but you are making them. There, there's people that that I know that your words have helped that you don't know. Oh yeah, you have I know. No way but of knowing saying, they uh, exist, but you know. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying, with, with social media, with Facebook, I mean, the amount of people I'm reaching on Facebook as, as opposed to the amount of people that I'm potentially putting on a watch list, um, how, much, how much good am I actually doing by using Facebook? Because I know the government wants me to use Facebook. The government loves people to use Facebook because through Facebook, they get all the information they need on everybody. They used to have to do years of of detecting on people and investigating on people to find out what they can find out in five minutes on Facebook now. So, you know, I just wonder, because I don't use mobile phones, I don't use credit cards, I just don't participate in the system and yet I use Facebook. And so I'm contributing to the, the government's data mining, I'm contributing to the CIA control grid by simply using Facebook. So I just wonder, you know, well, what's a just... fine line? I need to wind up the pros and the cons. And I don't see, I mean, like I say, I mean, I've, I've met some great people and all that sort of stuff, and there are benefits to it, but um, the cons of it, I mean, the fact that it is basically a government-controlled data mining site, that's what it is. Um, yeah, well, just, just, right just those people... Just so, just those people being themselves online is going is if it's going to put them on a watch list at all has equal potential of putting putting them on a watch list whether you're in the equation or not because that's how sophisticated the systems are. So just anybody saying anything online, everything's getting categorized and monitored and whatever. And I mean, it's not just Facebook either. 
I mean, it's as I like to tell people, if you want privacy, go to Mars. It's, you know, or out of the solar system because, you know, it's it's everything. You know, there's no there's no getting away from it. And I don't even think privacy is the biggest issue. I think censorship is the biggest freaking issue because, you know, once you have total total censorship, <laughs> you're fucking done. It's game over. You can you can have uh, breaches of privacy and still have a chance of, you know, uh, winning the long game. But once you have complete censorship, you've lost the whole game. Well, you know, we've got censorship to degree now. I think we're allowed to get away with doing what we do just simply so they can get tabs on people. Um, because they don't care. I mean, they don't, they don't care what the law is and they don't care what, what you believe your rights are. These are people, these are pedophiles who are harvesting most of the human race. They'll just take you out and kill you. They don't care. They have no morals. They have no scruples. They don't abide by the legal system. The legal system's there to tie us up, up in red tape, not to provide any remedy for us and not to, not to be used to hold them accountable for anything. So... You've really got to look yeah. at it. You know, I just wonder. I just wonder how much good I'm doing on Facebook. I mean, it isn't something that I really participate in much at all, anyway. So I just, I just think, you know, it'd be it's a thorn in their side if I don't use it. So I shouldn't use it. You know. So. Yeah, you know. I mean, I'd, um, I'd, I'd love to if I ever get arrested or I ever get asked by anything by the police. I mean, the first <laughs> thing they ask for is your is your is your cell phone details and your your Facebook. Account. It was simple to say to them, I actually don't have either of those. And they're going to go, oh, <laughs> you, mean we, you mean we actually have to do some detective work and find out stuff about you ourselves? Well, <laughs> modern police are too stupid. They wouldn't even know how to do that. You know, so just to see the look on their faces, it's worth cancelling the Facebook account. I mean, you know, I, I just kind of have that, that feeling about it, you know. So. Yeah. Um, one one thing I, I've also noticed too um, is that as more people start to awaken and they're processing their shame and they're dealing with their self with self worth and and the more they it's like the more they they face their own self worth and that they are worthy and deserving and everything you've you've ranted on for forever and a day once once they start to realize that they tend to go into what I refer to as um, abundant shock that I also refer to as the problem is that there is no problem. Um, if someone has neural networks that have gotten comfortable with and used to and familiar with the idea of of normal equals there's there's always problems or drama or some sort or this and that and never any good things. And then all of a sudden things start getting better for them and they have realizations and things start getting a little bit more positive for them. Um, once that happens too much, it creates cognitive dissonance because now their external reality is starting to um, defy um, their own core belief systems. And of course, um, a similar equal and opposite inversion of uh, the same thing happens if information is um, more negative than than what they're used to. Um, again, still the reactions caused by the, the deep um, shame um, and self-worth issues that they have. Now, what I've also noticed is once people clear out enough of these issues, they're able to much better handle um, you know, the details about the global stage. Um, whereas any human being, when they get too much information overload and cognitive dissonance, they go into um, anxiety. And, you know, that, and I'm not talking about the SJWs making excuses and trying to promote political correctness. I'm talking about legitimate anxiety that messes with your head. But when people like this are willing and determined to um, proceed forward and to shift through it and face themselves, um, they they do start to become very very um, empowered people. Um, I just want to reference my friend um, Katarina Roy. Um, you you have talked to her once, and she used to be one of those people that was still dealing with so much of her own Stockholm syndrome and being manipulated by narcissists in her life and this and that that. Even simple geopolitics used to just 
create so much cognitive dissonance in her brain and confusion that she was terrified of it. She didn't want to deal with it. But now at this point that she's worked out a lot more of her shame issues and she's really raised her sense of self-worth, she can talk geopolitics like a boss. So my point in telling you this is simply to show you that there are people being shifted and you've also indirectly helped Katarina as well because she's heard you talk and stuff too. She's not like a hardcore listener of your stuff, but she's heard things here and there and you have a very eloquent, you know, way, sensible way of explaining yourself. So, you know, you break it down easy. And that's, that's another thing that can create cognitive dissonance with people too because when when something is very easy to understand and clear to understand but it also contradicts the core belief system that makes the cognitive dissonance even greater but everybody's going through their processes on this and it's a turbulent dark night of the soul but man once people really get through it they become so freaking empowered so i want you to know that that's the effect you're having on people and yeah it takes a period of time however long it takes someone to go from from shame to start getting into empowerment that's their personal journey but i want you to know that these personal journeys are happening you're not out there speaking for nothing yeah i know i know a lot of people are listening and, and a lot of people like you say they're very uncomfortable with change they get locked into their their whole core belief system it's like a lot of even the independent media i mean i've noticed whenever i've tried to do anything that's going to create unity or anything that might lead to remedy People attack it, people will not do it. There's so many people who uh, the fight against the system is, is their life. It's all they know. And if they weren't fighting against the system and getting out there and being an activist every day, if we actually healed everything and the world started going in the right direction, they wouldn't know what to do with themselves. And also a lot of people would lose their income because there's a lot of that that's going on on YouTube now as well. There's been a lot of you know, monetization of accounts and sensationalizing. Like in the last two years, your YouTube has become almost like the mainstream media and as fact is everything is over-sensationalized. You, know, you get anything you can on anybody who's got a name, post whatever dirt you can get on them just as clickbait, just to get an income. You know, I get that, people either get that, you'll see bad articles, bad jackets put on everybody you can think of just to get the clicks, just to get the income. Um, sensationalized news reports that are uh, loosely based in truth just to get the income so there's been a lot of that going on as well so um a lot of people wouldn't know what to do if we won if if the world just changed their whole <laughs> they wouldn't know how to deal with peace they wouldn't know how to deal with prosperity they wouldn't know how to deal with freedom yeah now, a lot of people want freedom but well, they don't know what it looks like and they've got no idea yeah. what the path to it is. all they believe is freedom means they don't have to do anything or be responsible for anything and no one's going to ask them for anything well, they don't have to pay for anything. That seems to be what most people think freedom is, and really, that's not not what it is. You know, freedom is self responsibility, and most people or or e sorry. or even worse, even worse. You know, the people that that really believe in their in their heart of hearts that they're when they're wanting to fight tyranny and make this world a better place, they never stop to ask the question. Okay what if we win what then what are you going to replace it with and i've seen these two extremes where people either they you know they don't ask that question to begin with or people do ask that question and they come up with resource-based economics this that and whatever but they they fail to recognize that any fool can can break even a perfect system no one ever ever stops to consider transitional phases you know between point a and b it's common sense for us to realize that you don't go from a baby to a college graduate in 10 seconds there's this transitional phase of growing up um, to where the baby goes through its years of life and puberty and this and that, etc., and then on into adulthood. Um, similarly, as a society, as a civilization, there needs to be transitional phases out of our, our current system and then eventually into something like resource-based economics. Um, I, think, I think the middle of that journey would be equity-based economics to where this, this fiat scumbag, um, you know, Ponzi scheme monetary system um, no longer exists. Governments actually um, make their own money. The Federal Reserve is gone and 
you know, um, things well, move in a better direction. And then eventually transitioning out of the need for government at all, because government just means mind control. But people can't quit a system cold turkey because it creates too much cognitive dissonance. You need transitional phases. So people are either locked in a future. Sorry, go ahead. Well, yeah, you do. You need transitional stages. I mean, you can't go straight from, from you know, slavery to anarchy. It's not going to work. But the thing is, I mean, even talking about bringing in resource-based economies or whatever, you know, we don't have to construct a new system. We don't have to do anything. All we've got to do is change our moral compass and apply that to our everyday life, and the system has to change around us. It's as simple as that. Yeah. You know, all of this corruption, all of this, this war, all of this miseducation, the homelessness, the profiteering from people, the scarcity that we're in, the fiat money system. If people were doing the right thing, they wouldn't be supporting the fiat money system. If they changed what's in their hearts, they exactly. wouldn't support it. It's as simple as that. Well, that's... In every aspect well, that's of our life. And if they bring along a resource-based economy, the zeitgeist movement, Ubuntu or whatever, if people haven't changed their moral compass, then it isn't going to matter. Within 10 years, we'll be back where we started because we're still doing the exactly. wrong thing. We're doing. And if we were to change exactly. our moral yeah. compass, we don't have to do anything else. It's really that simple. The whole world will organically change around us. It's so simple. And people well, can't see the forest they can't see that it has to come from within and that that's where the change is going to be they want someone to send them a yeah. newsletter to say because i supported your movement i've got the newsletter that says the world cha has changed now i can continue going to work and doing the shopping and all the stuff that i'm doing well how has it changed you know if you haven't done something about it yourself then it's not going to change that's why people vote mm -hmm. for trump and think he's going to lead him to safety he's not you have to lead yourself mm -hmm. to safety by changing what's in here exactly. and applying it to the world and the fact that people can't you know, see I that, would, I mean, you know, you know, I would, I would, I would, I would really love it. I'm not saying he will or won't. I'm on the fence. I don't know. I would really love it if Trump decided to start talking to the people about personal responsibility and about sovereignty and about things like like what you talk about to try to try to motivate people out of this false sense of you know of entitlement. Mm -hmm. And um, he won't do any. You know, as far he won't do any of that. He won't do any of that because he's a player. He's playing the same agenda. Yeah. He's playing the same foreign agenda as the previous administrations. All he's doing is giving them all the band aids for all the mess that the previous administrations have created, which is why they created that mess. So he could come yeah. along and give you all this appeasement and escalate the global agenda, which is exactly what he's doing. Yeah. But what you were saying about about you know the hearts and minds needing to change and the reality change around, that's exactly why transitional phases are needed, and that's that's exactly where those transitional phases come from. Transitional phases are 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 neither created nor provided by governments, by corporations, by anything like no. that. Transition transitional phases are are, are, are are yeah. They, they are created by the people because it's needed. Like you said, an idea whose time has come. That the, Those are the transitional phases. Yeah, and, and I think and we're slowly a, starting to a, see them. I mean, if people started doing the right thing and what they do, hang on, you get to work and hang on, I can't do this. This is the wrong thing. It doesn't matter what it says here. It's the wrong thing to do. And they just did the right thing. That would create ripples. That would create ripples. And you see all these businesses and companies falling apart that were polluting the environment. I mean, the transitional period would be an organic thing which would manifest itself out of necessity for there to be something like that. And if everyone was in their moral yeah. compass, we'd, be, we'd go along with it. It would work. There might be psychopaths who don't want to do that. Well, that's fine. They can go live on Christmas Island or something. Whatever. Get them, get them over there. Get them, get them off. Totally. We can put all these politics and stuff on Christmas Island. Give them all a hammer. They can have their war. Not a problem. Just don't involve the rest <laughs> of the world, you know. So I always, I always, I always like to say, you vote with your money, not not at the polls, because <coughs> no matter who you vote for at the polls, Wall Street gets in no matter what. But you know, just like you've watched the Matrix movies, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know that one scene where um, uh, where it said that um, the um, the the machines of the Matrix are directly um dependent upon um the rules you know of their matrix well similarly all these corporations and everything depend on the money system um if the if the money system was suddenly just gone 
these corporations would have no no power to do anything you know money is like like the lubricant in, in the gears of the corporate machine you take that away the machine grinds to a halt um, also just recently for example um, you've heard of um, Tropicana um, orange juice company right yeah, yeah. Well, there's there, there there's so much more awareness here about GMOs now, and no, I'm happy to report. You know, I live here in Chicago, um, on on a on a local radio station. I don't listen to much local radio, but I happen to be um in a local mart, and they had it, you know, playing over the speakers and whatever. And I was at the checkout counter. Um, there was actually a commercial on talking about how GMOs are dangerous. And you know, in, in information about why GMOs are, are bad and all this and that, and that was on local AM FM radio, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Right? Like, you know, um, that was freaking awesome. Well, because of the rise in awareness about GMOs, and there's even like cell phone bar scanners where you can scan the barcode of an item and and really actually find out whether it's it's truly GMO or not. Um, basically, um, sales for anything GMO have lowered substantially in the United States, plus the majority of countries outside of the United States will not buy GMO garbage. So Tropicana started seeing steady declines in its profits. So they were actually forced to go non-GMO in order to raise their profits again because they couldn't export to too many places because most places won't buy you know most countries won't buy gmo bullshit and sales started going down here in the united states so you know if they're not bringing in the profits they're they're screwed exactly. <clears throat> so they had to adapt to the will, will of the people the people voted with their money yeah well, that, that really helps, and that's what people should do. That's what you know, the whole boy, boycott, divestment, sanctions about. And, yeah, people should stop supporting anything that, that supports harm, injury, or death. Any company that can be seen to be supporting anything that supports harm, injury, or death, just stop supporting it. Stop supporting GMO. GMOs are dangerous. They're causing sterility in three generations. We know this. We know that's what they do. Um, there's been all sorts of studies. Just stop supporting it. Stop supporting anything that about the system that you don't like, and, yeah, vote with your wallets. We should do that. I mean, it's, this is why I've been calling for a day of non-compliance for so many years. You imagine what would happen if we all stayed home and just didn't spend money for a day. It would send a shockwave around the world. The whole, the whole economic system would fall apart if we didn't spend money for a day. Wall Street would crumble. It wouldn't know what to do. Imagine if none of the Dow index, nothing moved for the day. That all freak, mate. All those people on the floor would be going, oh, my God, what do I write down? Where's my reality gone, you know? <laughs> so we could really make a difference by just, just staying home for a day. You know, that's, that's what real non-compliance is. That's what a real revolution would be. You don't have to go and march in the street. Just stay home and don't get involved in the system. For 24 hours, just do not get involved in the system. Turn off your cell phone. Turn off your television. Don't spend any money and spend some time with your family. Imagine if the whole world did that, David. It would be incredible. Oh, here's the guys yeah. walking to the oh oh here's that that guy. that that reminds me oh that reminds me of something else i wanted to tell you oh thank you thank you for reminding me you know how how you want to make um um the 15th of uh some month or another um international non-compliance day yeah um my suggestion my well my my suggestion there i've had a good and, it, it, in order to in order to give it enough momentum, um, why don't you just make it so that the fifteenth of every month is International Non-Compliance Day, so that you know if you don't get the numbers you're really looking for the first try, well, there's plenty of other months after the first one, and you can gauge month by month, um, you know how the response to that is is going. Or if you just make it once a year, if you make it once a year, it's going to take way longer to gauge. It's yeah, not well, going to be as effective. Uh, that may work. That may be an idea. So I think there's a, a woman trying to do that already. I think um, oh, there's a woman I've got on Skype. I've got so many people on Skype, and I feel really embarrassed. I can't remember her name. Karen. I think a lady called Karen is actually already trying to do that on the 15th of every month. Perhaps I'll have to contact her and see what she says. I've got so much on, so many projects on, it's hard to know where to even begin. It's difficult oh, to get I, anything. 
I feel I'm yeah. But so now I've got all these tours. I mean, I've got I've got nine months of traveling ahead of me now. This is going to be the last tour I do for a while because I'm just getting too old for it. I, I really need to have some time off, and I want to go and, yeah. and get some films finished. I haven't finished a film since 2012. They're going to pull down the tower. They're, they're out there now. You know, you know, in a we're going to lose in the internet. Sense, in we're going to lose the internet in a minute because I can. Oh. The workers, the workers have just walked out to the tower. We're having our tower pulled down here today, folks. This is life in the Amazon. Perfect. And uh, yeah, we have very intimate internet here in the Amazon. I can't even complain because I'm in the Amazon. It's so yeah. bad. And the IT guy came out to fix it, and it still didn't fix anything. So now they're here to replace the tower for us with another one that's four meters well, it's, higher. It's which, still uh, been really done great today. to have. It, it's still really gr been really great to have you on, and, and I'm sure we'll probably, um, you know, hook up again on here in March when you're in Hawaii. So anybody in, in Hawaii yeah. in, in March, uh, be on the lookout for Max Egan. And um, you're also going to be in um, Ohio um, in person at Rock the Farm as well. Um, and that's going to be when yeah, again? I'll be there. I'll also be at the Free and Mind Conference in Philadelphia in, uh, in April 20th, I think. And I'm going to speak in an Acapulco in Mexico in a couple of days. Yeah. And then the... Uh, oh, when, you are you gonna, when, when are you going to be at Rock the Farm? Rock the Farm will be the 5th of May, I think. I think it's the 5th, 5th okay. and 6th, I think. Uh, that weekend, okay. any other weekend, the 5th is on. It's around then. And um, then I, the, if you go to my website, thecrowhouse.com, you'll see a banner there that says Combo, Combo Workshops Hawaii. And there's a series of workshops I'm doing there over a five-week period in Hawaii, uh, which is really wonderful yeah. for the guy. And uh, there's a retreat there called Earth Song, which is interesting because that's the name of one of the films I'm working on. And it's just wonderful for the people from the retreat to be flying me out there and, and putting up for them. I'm going to um, do some talks and some meet and greets and just some hang out with people and do some combo workshops and just kind of check the place out. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then go from there to a free mind in Philadelphia on on uh, April twentieth, and then go from April. Actually, then go from there to um, a gig there on April twenty second. Uh, hopefully with Marty Leeds. I did an interview with him last night. I gave him a bit of a hard time. Said that I definitely would want to see him there. And um, yeah, that's the way. Are you still there? Okay, and I am back. Um, sorry about that, both me and Max having technical difficulties at the same time. Um, he was saying that they might be starting to work on the tower at the moment, synchronistically, at the same time. Um, my computer had issues and, and crashed, so um, that was incredibly interesting. I am typing with um, Max right now to uh, see if he can get back in. Yeah, the energies have definitely been interesting. Um, Max will be back in here in a moment if he can be, if they haven't fully taken down the tower yet and um, you know, if he can get back in. And in the meantime, while we are waiting to see whether or not that happens, I just want to say yet again that the Paradigm Shift in Educational Comedy, we've got um, a Patreon link. So that's patreon.com forward slash PSEC Media. That's P S E C Media. For Max Egan's Patreon, that's patreon.com forward slash Max Egan. And um, I had mentioned Katarina Roy earlier on uh, patreon.com forward slash Katarina Roy, seeing as we mentioned her earlier as well. So, um, and of course, for Max Egan's website, um, you can hit him up there at um, thecrowhouse.com. And um, he also has a YouTube channel, of course. And once um, I can get back into alignment with him here um i will be um just asking him whether he wants the link to this uh you know this youtube file once everything is saved in or if he wants to file direct from me on skype or whatever i'm not exactly sure how long that we've uh, been on air at the moment hopefully it's been a decently long time 
And um, even though we synchronistically seem to have aligned with them, <laughs> you know, his internet connection literally, like, you know, the the tower being, like, removed and, and rebuilt and crap. Um, we will be having him on again in March um, because that's going to be his next available open window to be able to get back on and have internet and all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, he's going to be in Hawaii in March, which is pretty cool. Katarina Roy is in Hawaii. Um, you can go to thecrowhouse.com to look up all the details of exactly where Max is going to be and when. And um, we will get him back on here as soon as possible. I think um, the conversation we were having is very interesting and very relevant. And I hope um, the rest of you watching maybe think about these topics and consider um, discussing them amongst yourselves on whatever platforms you all have going because you know the idea of just you know this wave of compassion hitting the planet and everybody just kind of getting triggered and facing their shit like that's just been like a big theme of 2017 so far and you know I think that um, humanity is at a point where it's being offered a really good um, opportunity to, you know, just kind of face our own messes and, you know, clean that out and clean out all of this, um, this shame that society has, you know, put into us all of this, all this low self esteem, and, you know, false sense of guilt, and, you know, realize that um, we can be the person that we want to be, um, we can be the change that, you know, we want to see in the world, and that, we see the world as as we are not as it is so you know um you can be the change you want to create and yeah it, you know it's going to require facing yourself and sorting through paradigms and shifting through paradigms you can't just like you know meditate and go off into the five the fifth dimension or whatever because uh guess what as as i have sung on one of my song parodies called dealing with a new age paradigm um 5D you will not earn if you just watch the world burn. So, um, you know, I'm not saying, you know, don't be new agey. I'm not saying don't believe in quantum physics. I'm not saying don't believe in Jesus. I'm not saying don't believe in God. I'm just saying that, you know, God said, seek and you shall find because God helps those who help themselves. Um, we get presented with opportunities in our lives. And whether we see that these opportunities as opportunities or as burdens it's kind of like you know the negative um if you kind of view it the same as manure meaning literally shit um you know we can roll around in the manure and act as if it's it's victimizing us or we can use that that manure and plant the garden that we prefer you know taking um the negative and viewing it as a positive opportunity for positive change instead of doing all this shun the dark shit or oh back satan or whatever you know make peace with those demons inside of us so that we can stop psychologically projecting outside of us because all of the external dysfunction that creates genocide more and all the stuff outside of us that we don't like it's because we we are not as individuals willing to um, face ourselves inside of ourselves and clear out all this programmed shame that society and peer pressure and all that you know has has put into us that fucks with our heads and you know the more that we can we can clear that out you know the more effective we're going to be at viewing the negative as a positive opportunity um for positive change so um you know it's quite an adventure it's quite a journey it's not going to be you know be easy um you know there's gonna gonna be some challenges but you know through challenge there's there's growth you know what doesn't kill you makes you stronger right so um i would just like to suggest in closing because yeah obviously max's towers uh <laughs> you know being chopped down here so should probably make an ending statement and and close this out just you know believe nothing disbelieve nothing question everything be calm about it um you know when when you feel emotionally triggered inside instead of reacting in shame like oh i, I should know better than to be acting like this and then go into denial mode and have it co-opt you just 
you know, own your emotions. Realize that even your negative emotions are your property and you have the right to feel them. And once you give yourself the right to feel them, you're going to stop this negative feedback loop of, of suffering inside of you. And then it's going to be a storm that goes through and then it passes and the proverbial sun will come back out again and you'll gain a bit more of your sanity and self-control because you can you can think and make wiser decisions when your brain isn't constipated so respect your pace of learning be easy on yourself and when you start seeing you know your program neural networks uh flaring up and getting triggered instead of going into guilt and denial hit the pause button on it and go okay i see why that's happening there now what would i rather do and when you're not in judgment against the negative emotions that you're feeling, you can hit that pause button. But when you're not owning your emotions and you're thinking, oh my God, I shouldn't be sad. I shouldn't be angry. I shouldn't be this. I shouldn't be that. Oh, I'm a bad person for thinking that, feeling that, etc. When you do that, you lock yourself into slavery in that pattern and you start to do and think and feel all the things you're not wanting, <laughs> you know. And the, it just becomes a big, horrible mess, and then you end up in the loony bin or, or a, a politician, <laughs> depending on your social class. Same thing anyway, right? So, <laughs> anyway, um, thank you all for watching. Hope you all have a nice day, night, morning, whatever it is on your part of the planet. And um, catch you later, and we will have Max Egan back as soon as possible. So, thank you. Love you all. Catch you later. Peace out.